Well, welcome to this house of books. Today we have with us, uh, which author are we today? <laughs> Leslie Butterwitz and uh, Alicia Beckman. I am both Leslie and Alicia, depending on which book I'm talking about. Okay, and today we're actually gonna feature uh, one by uh, Alicia Beckman. Uh, so we'll get into that in a minute. Maybe you could tell us just a little bit about yourself and uh, the, uh, the pen name is a curiosity, maybe. Uh, you bet. Yeah. Blind Faith is the new book. It is my 15th published book, 14th novel. And I finally write a book set in my hometown of Billings, Montana, and I don't use my own name. What gives? The, the reason for that is that I also write uh, two series of lighthearted mysteries, what are sometimes called cozies, uh, the mac and cheese or comfort food of the mystery world. Think Agatha Christie or Jessica Fletcher with recipes. When I started writing Standalone Suspense, my publisher wanted to distinguish those books from the cozies so that readers would know what to expect. It's not like the new books uh, have suddenly turned me into Hannibal Lecter, although I suppose he did write about food. Um, <laughs> but they are a little darker, a little moodier, as you can tell by the covers that Mark has displayed mm -hmm. here so nicely. It's your first one there, Bitter Bitterroot Lake, Lake, and then uh, and Blind Faith. Blind Faith yes. And so the name Alicia Beckman is the name that honors my mother, Alice Butowitz, who lived in Billings for, gosh, 57 years. Uh, and the Beckmans were her grandparents. And so I picked a name that keeps me in the same part of the alphabet and is easier to spell and pronounce than Butowitz. Okay, <laughs> very good. Um, I, I'm, I'm just going to follow this up for a little bit. Now, the, you say the ones by Alicia Beckman are a little darker. And in your cozies, it's not as though bad things don't happen to people. I mean, there are people who are murdered and, and, and attacked brutally and all kinds of things happen to them. But, I mean, it, so that's fairly dark right there in itself. But these are darker? So in the cozy mystery, what we usually have is a main character, usually a woman, not always, who runs a business, usually not always, um, that puts her in touch with the community. She is she has somehow got a, a, a deep centered connection to her community. And when a crime happens, the crime disrupts the social order of the community. And her job as an amateur sleuth is to protect the people and places that she loves. And that's why she investigates. Sometimes she's the suspect, sometimes it's a close family member, sometimes it's someone who works for her or someone else who is part of this community. And what we have in a, a cozy is two parallel investigations. The professional investigation by law enforcement, whose goal is to bring someone into the justice system, arrest them, convict them if they're guilty. And the amateur sleuth, whose job is basically to mend that rent to the social order that the crime has caused. So the focus for me in a cozy, one of these, these lighthearted mysteries, is, is the community aspect. Uh, we've often got food in, in this kind of book because what what brings people together better than food? Exactly. And there are, as you can tell by the titles and the covers, uh, humor, uh, peppermint barked, uh, crime rib, which is set at a, a steak grill off, assault and pepper. The main character's name is Pepper. And that's in my spice shop series set in Seattle's Pike Place Market, where my main character runs a spice shop. Uh, so we have humor and uh, the the crime is is the catalyst for the story and in a mystery we've usually got a crime that's already happened and we're trying to solve it in suspense and this is a, a generalization we don't no yet know what has happened what's going on there are threats circling around our main character but we don't necessarily know what's going on yet we don't know what the threats are sometimes she has trouble convincing people that these threats are are even real, uh, but she knows they're there, and so she has to uh, work to to uh, 
protect herself and to figure out what this threat is and solve that before it becomes something worse. That's, as I say, an overgeneralization, and my books don't strictly fit in those definitions because I'm always pushing and playing with things. Sure. But they are a little moodier. Okay. Well, fantastic. Well, why don't you uh, uh, tell us about your, your current one with the Blind Faith. It's, it's a book that just came out uh, in the middle of October, so it's brand new on the market. Uh, what could you say about it? So the short version of Blind Faith, and I'm going to have to read this off my bookmark because I don't always remember, two women whose paths crossed in Montana years ago discover they share keys to a deadly secret that exposes a killer and changes everything they thought they knew about themselves. What we've got is a contemporary cold case investigation because a piece of evidence in a long unsolved murder surfaces. And so then we also have a historical timeline that starts 50 years earlier and moves its way forward. We have four point of view characters, so there's a little bit of movement uh, and you have to be willing to, uh, to stick with that. I, I think that uh, that is a great way to tell a story like this, which covers so many, time, uh, so many years and so many different people's perspectives. I couldn't figure out any other way to, to tell it. And I love that kind of, of story that brings the past forward in such a tangible mm -hmm. way. Well, your writing is always so tight, you know, it's always, uh, the, the, the plots are so tightly organized. And so um, I, I would think that that type of uh, plot would be very complicated to pull off, but you do it. Thanks. I will tell you, at one point, the bifold closet doors in my office were covered with rows of sticky notes in three <laughs> different colors to help me just at a glance know whether I was in 1981 <laughs> or 2016 when the contemporary storyline takes Fantastic. place. Was there anything else you'd like to say about this book then? I worked on Blind Faith for a number of years, uh, and it's, it's a book that I, I really love, and I hope the readers do too. It was great fun to come back to Billings on the page and write about a, a city that uh, was the place where I was born and raised and, and a place that I found very nurturing and a place I still love, and I hope readers do too. Well, I love it. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Always a joy to talk with you. Thank you. You too. This has been a production of This House of Books.